Microsoft's AI chatbot became racist within 24 hours after interacting with humans online. Image recognition algorithms in Google Photos were classifying black people as gorillas. Amazon built a recruitment model that penalized the word woman in CVs. An algorithm used by the American criminal justice system was twice as likely to falsely accuse black offenders than white offenders. The list goes on and on. If left unchecked, AI is consistently shown to produce biased results. This is where the field of algorithm fairness comes in. We're going to discuss this field and what it aims to achieve. Along the way, we'll touch on topics like the reason for unfairness, how to measure it and prevent it. And keep an eye out for links to videos that go into more depth. You can also check out the companion article in the description. This contains a bunch of links and references. So, algorithm fairness is at the intersection of ethics and machine learning. It is the field of research aimed at understanding and preventing unfairness in models. Specifically, the field includes researching the cause of bias in data and algorithms, defining and applying measurements of fairness, developing data collection and modeling methodologies aimed at creating fair algorithms. And providing advice to governments and corporates on how to regulate machine learning. It is also important to understand that approaches to fairness are not only quantitative. This is because the reasons for unfairness go beyond data and algorithms. So research will also involve understanding and addressing the root cause of unfairness. So how can a model become unfair? Algorithm fairness is actually a bit of a misleading term. Algorithms by themselves are not inherently biased. They are just mathematical functions. By training one of these algorithms on data, we end up with a machine learning model. It is the introduction of biased data that can lead to a biased model. That being said, our choices around algorithms can still amplify these biases. Data can be biased for different reasons. The data can reflect historical injustice. It could be due to a lack of minority representation in our data set. It could also be due to model features that are highly associated with sensitive attributes like race or gender. Critically, what we want to avoid is a negative feedback loop. If users interact with a biased model, this can produce more biased data, which can then enforce bias in future model builds. Much of algorithm fairness research aims at developing methods to analyze and measure unfairness. This can involve analyzing data for the potential reasons of unfairness that we just mentioned. It also involves measuring unfairness in model predictions. We can measure fairness in predictions by applying different definitions of fairness. Most of these involve splitting the population into a privileged and unprivileged group. We can then compare the two groups using different evaluation metrics. For example, under the equalized odds definition, we require the true positive rates and false positive rates of the two groups to be equal. It is important to remember that assessing fairness does not start when you have your final model. It should also be part of your exploratory analysis. That is, we want to understand what aspects of our data may potentially lead to an unfair model. If we discover that our model is unfair, we would naturally want to correct it. Various quantitative measures have been developed. These are divided into three groups based on which stage during the model development process they are applied. We have pre-processing methods, which modify data, in-processing methods, which modify algorithms, and post-processing methods, which modify predictions. An example of a pre-processing method is disparate impact removal. This works by modifying features so the distribution for two groups becomes similar. We must remember that fairness is a complicated issue and all quantitative approaches will have their limitations. To fully address unfairness, we'll also need non-quantitative approaches. These include 
addressing the root cause of unfairness, having an awareness of the problem of unfair models, and investing in a diverse team. Interpretability is also an important aspect. We must be able to understand the reasoning behind predictions, explain those predictions to users, and give them the opportunity to challenge them. This way, any unfair decisions are far more likely to be corrected. That being said, if you're interested in interpretability, then look no further than SHAP. It is the most powerful Python package for understanding and debugging your models. My course will teach you both the theory and application behind SHAP. And for a limited time, you can get free access if you sign up to my newsletter in the description.